Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with another paddling adventure. And uh, this time around I'm doing it solo style. I am heading out for a little exploration, a body of water that I'm only 10 minutes from home. But this is a body of water that I've never paddled before. I've never even launched at this boat launch before. And I'm paddling this new kayak that I've never tried before. This is the Melker Uvon. And so it's a morning of firsts. I'm trying to get a good start. So I'm gonna stop talking and start unloading. Pretty much ready to hit the water. Um, so I wanna take a second here to show you what I'm bringing along for this trip. This is the kayak here. This is the Melker Uvon. It is a 17 and a half foot long, fast moving, 21 inch wide sea kayak. I mean, this thing looks like it's designed for speed, so I'm excited to try that. I'm bringing along a backup paddle. This is a uh, the Aquabound Whiskey Carbon paddle, because I'm going to be using the Gear Lab Outdoors iPick paddle right there. This is a Greenland paddle and I don't get a chance to use a Greenland paddle very often. So when I do get a chance, I jump on the opportunity. I want to be covering some ground today. I'm going to be moving and so, um, and it's going to be a long paddle. And so this thing is conducive to long days of paddling. Otherwise, I am going to be wearing a skirt uh, in case it's not supposed to have any winds, but if, unless it picks up, uh, of course, a life jacket. Um, this is the uh, NRS uh, Oso. I have a bunch of water and snacks. This is half coconut water and ice water, some grapes, some Gatorade and water up here, and then a bunch of nuts and energy bars, um, sunscreen, some earplugs because I always get ear infections and I might actually try the rolling this thing. Azolio, a communication device, even though I'm pretty certain I'm gonna have cell, uh, cell coverage the whole time. And then I have a um, first aid kit and uh, a raincoat just in case things get nasty. That's about it. It's already hot and humid. So I'm gonna be going through some water today, um, but it's a there and back trip. I kind of expect to be covering somewhere in the, around 15 miles today. Uh, depends on how far up this channel. I want to go up this channel and it looks cool on Google Maps. Um, and it looks like I might be able to get a pretty long ways up the channel, this narrow channel, but we'll soon find out. So let's hit the water. Have a good day. Well, the plan is to head downstream. In the past, I've never gone downstream. And so looking at Google Maps, <laughs> looks good. It's a pretty big body of water. I'm on the Ottawa River and it doesn't look like a river in a lot of the areas. It looks like a lake. There's also some really cool looking little bays and offshoots, creeks even that come in and looks like I might be able to paddle up a ways. So that's what I'm gonna do. Explore, it's time to explore. And this is a nice fast machine to explore with. <laughs> well, Beaver's starting to do his job. Ooh, that didn't sound so good. There's more than a beaver there. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Ulvon. I don't think I can get through. I left my mark though. <laughs> First scratch. There we go. That one's always the most painful, but inevitable. <laughs> So this boat, the uh, Ulvan, the Melker Ulvan, I mean, it is absolutely a stunning boat visually. Actually, if you don't know anything about Melker kayaks, what's really cool about them is 
they, uh, instead of using carbon fiber Kevlar for uh, the weave that goes into this thing, they use locally sourced flax fibers to create the weave. And it, it gives it the beautiful woody-like look, but it also is uh, more environmentally friendly. One of their key missions is to, <laughs> I think they say, redefine um, the manufacturing process in the paddling industry, making it ultimately completely sustainable. I mean, they're not there yet, but they're working towards it. The founder, he doesn't come from paddle sports. He comes from uh, tech world and he's an, en an engineer. He brought all these ideas, these learnings from different industries to paddle sports. He just wanted to get out of that world and, and into a, a world he loved. And he brought those ideas. The question though is how does it, how does it paddle and Wow. I mean, it's a beautiful sea kayak. This is a 17 and a half foot long sea kayak. It's designed for speed. It doesn't have any rocker <laughs> almost at all. Uh, it really is designed for touring. At the same time, it's got plenty of volume up front. It doesn't have like a big upturned nose to deal with big rough water per se, but it's got a lot of volume up there. It's got a lot of volume in general. I think it's 230 liters of storage space. So you could do a real trip in this thing. A couple of things to, to note about it, it doesn't have thigh hooks. Clearly not designed for rough water paddling, for the surf, for rock gardens and things like that. I mean, this is a kayak that's designed for touring, for covering long distances. The benefit of not having thigh hooks is that people who aren't as comfortable with in kayaks, being enclosed in a kayak, your knee just pop, your both knees just pop right out very easily, this thing. So it's just a, you know, it, more security for people who are who are less comfortable in a sit inside kayak. Doesn't mean you can't roll this thing. Absolutely, you could totally roll this thing. The deck has enough contour to it and actually it comes with pads that you place yourself, which is really nice. Um, it has enough contour so that I can grab the deck with my knees and so, absolutely can roll this thing there's no question in my mind offers a little more confidence for less um less aggressive paddlers less comfortable paddlers a couple of things that are also neat about this kayak is it comes with both a rudder and a skeg so you don't have to choose between the two and that's pretty that's pretty darn neat i don't typically use rudders i am comfortable enough with my, just my paddling technique to be able to adjust to make to turn you know maneuver but the rudder there sorry the um skeg is a is a great addition i do like the skeg in fact i just dropped it a little bit because it's almost perfectly calm but not quite there's a slight breeze and i'm noticing the boat weather cocking just a hair and so i drop the skeg down just a hair so i love having a skeg in a lot of boats in long boats but typically I, i'll choose a skeg over a rudder yeah i just prefer a skeg Taking a little break, stretch the legs. You know, I've been in the, the boat for about two and a half hours, over two and a half hours now. And uh, it's a surprisingly comfortable seat for what it is because it's so basic, but it's, it's still pretty basic. So it doesn't have a lot of padding. My butt needed a little break. And you know what? I needed to just get up and have a quick bite. In fact, I'm trying out this. <laughs> go macro macro bar it's uh it's an energy bar it's good but this one's organic vegan gluten free and uh it's made out of a small small rural town so you know being from one myself i like to support the the small guys anyway less talking more paddling Woo! that was ungraceful all right Onward. Okay. This could be a very short adventure. I really don't know how far up I'm going to be able to get. Something tells me it's only going to be a high water channel. But you never know. And I have proven that I'm willing to 
pretty few scratches in this boat to accomplish my goal. The way I look at it, as nice as a boat is, I mean, this boats don't get much nicer or any nicer, more beautiful than this sucker right here. But what the heck is the point of having a kayak if you're not going to use it and explore with it? A boat without scratches is a boat without experiences. I don't know if that's true, but I kind of like that. I wish you could hear what I hear, the sound of this paddle in the water. I mean, this thing is so ridiculously light. You want to know how light it is? Well, this is how light it is. Whoa! <laughs> I almost took my teeth out. Whoa! That's how light this paddle is. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The first number of times I paddled with this Greenland paddle, it took me, you know, a, a solid 15, 20 minutes to get used to the paddling style. The blade would always seem to flutter on me and I had to consciously think about the angle that I was pulling it through the water. Now, even though I don't do it very often, it's, it's at the point now where I don't even know how I felt so much flutter beforehand. It, uh, it just feels natural going through the water now. The Greenland paddle takes more time than a standard paddle. And so, you know, I think that would be my only, only criticism of a Greenland paddle is the fact that if someone didn't have the patience to get comfortable with the Greenland paddle, they might get a little frustrated and, you know, potentially it would ruin the experience, the paddling experience for them. And that would be, that would be a shame. And then maybe that's just the tip right there is if you do go for a paddle like this, man, it's a beautiful paddle, but you do have to be prepared to spend a little time to get to know it, figure it out. Cause it's not as intuitive as a normal paddle. Oh. Is that what I think it is? Huh. There's a massive culvert up ahead. I almost guarantee you I won't be able to get paddle up that culvert. Well, we'll soon see. A beaver dam on the other side of the culvert. That is gonna make this more challenging. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to drag my boat up. Can I get up there? Oh, is that a nice big field of poison ivy right on the side? Ah. Let's see what happens here. What do we got? No, nope, it's not poison ivy. That's good. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I have this feeling. I have this feeling that I'm going to get up there. Whoa. And slippery stuff here. And uh, I'm not going to be able to get anywhere. Water's a little low. I think it's worth the effort. Let's give it a shot. Sorry about, this might hurt a little bit. Absolutely incredible what beavers do. Mind blowing. This is like a eight to 10 foot wall. It's holding back a river. Don't put so much weight back. That would suck to slide back. Onward. Screw you, beaver. Oh, that's 
another beaver dam. I have this feeling I'm going to be fighting beavers the whole way here. There's another beaver dam up ahead. How many of these little dams am I going to have to go up? Sorry, Mr. Melker. Well, we're not making headway quick, that's for sure. This beaver dam has been here a long time. Okay, this is looking pretty good for a while here. I might actually get to the lake. I think I timed it well, oh. God, why do I open my mouth before I'm there? And this isn't because of a beaver. This is because of a just fallen wood. Okay. It's moments like these where you question the... It's not risk to reward. It's pain and ass to reward factor. But it looks like the lake is right there on the other side of that beaver dam. And I just have to get over this log and that beaver dam. Cables wobbles. All right. All right, well, not so bad really. I mean, need to get the kayak through the slop up here and that's it that's the lake be crazy to give up at this point oh yeah <laughs> okay this better be an epic lake <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Victory! So worth it. Maybe not the most epic lake if you just take this lake for what it is, but epic for what it meant to me to get here. That was a good mission. That was a good mission, but as I always say, the mission is far from over when you reach where your destination because you still got to get home. Now that I can actually see what's going on, the clouds, is a, that's the thunderstorm I'm hearing. And those clouds definitely seem to be moving this way. I'm going to have to make a move here. I'm going to have to enjoy this for maybe another minute and then start the battle back. Well, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this paddle TV adventure, a very different type of paddling adventure. Awesome way to test the new Melker Urvan. And I'll tell you what, I didn't test it in rough water, but I tested it in rough conditions. And uh, that was a fun boat to paddle. Very fun boat to paddle. You know, it's a beautiful boat. I feel still feel a little bit bad about putting some pretty good scratches in it right now but that's what you have kayaks for is to use them. And so I don't care how beautiful a boat is, I'm gonna use it <laughs> and I hope you guys use them too. Stay tuned, because I'm gonna be doing more of these. Let me know if you like this type of adventure or you want more straight up gear reviews and, and tips. If that's what you'd prefer to see, that's cool with me. Yeah, leave a comment down below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and stay tuned for lots more paddling tips, paddling gear reviews and paddling adventures.